okay so friends today we shall discuss about time taken by a liquid present in a tank to decrease the level from h1 to h2 how much time it is going to take here so when the liquid is up to this level h1 after some time as there is a very small orifice the water is coming out from the orifice orifice is a very small hole now from this hole the liquid is coming out with a speed v1 understand when the height is h1 but as you know that when the level of the liquid decreases the speed of the liquid flow is also decreasing as the speed of the liquid flow is decreasing even the range this range is also going to decrease as the level of the liquid decreases the range also going to decrease the speed is also going to decrease now let us discuss how much time the liquid has taken to move from level h1 to h2 what is the time taken to decrease the level from h1 to h2 that is the formula for us that the formula you have to find out now so this is going to be volume you know volume is equal to area into length if you observe that the area of the cross section of the tank is a the area of cross section of the orifice there is a very small hole is taken as a small a here then you know that volume the formula is nothing but area into length what length you are going to consider as the level was previously h1 now the level is h2 then h is going to be h1 minus h2 which is considered to be length l here so which is considered to be length l here so volume can be taken as area into length where length is considered to be h1 minus h2 then how can you write this h1 minus h2 this can be written like this v is equal to a you can write this as h1 whole square minus h2 under root whole square here so a square minus b square doesn't change the meaning here it is going to be same h1 is written as under root of h1 whole square minus under root of h2 whole square then let us see what is going to happen here so now this can be taken as square root of h1 plus h2 into under root of h1 minus h2 okay so a square minus b square is nothing but a plus b into a minus b you can just write the formula and leave it off so this is about volume okay so we are discussing about the upper part now the upper part so at surface we are talking about the surface this is the concept at the surface which is going to happen because of liquid level decrease now we shall decrease what is happening at the orifice at the orifice orifice means it's a very small hole so at this place what is going to happen here so for this you have to write volume rate of flow of liquid what do you mean by volume rate of flow of liquid it is taken as volume by time volume by time then what is volume volume can be taken as area into length by time so this can be taken as area into velocity you got this as area into velocity but you have to consider the average velocity because the when the level of the liquid was up to height h1 the speed of the liquid was v1 when the liquid was decreased to level h2 the speed of the liquid was taken as v2 as it has got different speeds at different points you have to consider the average speed here so when you are going to consider the average speed what is going to happen so volume rate of flow of liquid is taken as a average speed is taken as v1 plus v2 by 2 now here you should understand one thing at this place v1 you have to consider this it is going to be root of 2g h1 and you know it is going to be root of 2g h2 why are you going like uh, right like this there is a basic concept that whenever there is a hole and the level, level of the liquid is up to h here whenever there is a hole and the level of the liquid above this hole is h then what is the speed of the liquid there is a formula we have uh, we can derive by using bernoulli's theorem it is there in the books is a fundamentals we can say so by using bernoulli's theorem we have we can prove that the velocity at this place at the orifice is going to be square root of 2g h but previously the velocity was v1 so we have to consider as root of 2g h and after that the velocity is going to be a v2 you can consider this as velocity that is uh, under root of 2g h2 okay so we got v1 and v2 then 
what are you going to do here? You can substitute these values here. So V by T is taken as this is V1. V1 is nothing but square root of 2G H1 plus square root of 2G 2G H2. So 2G H2. By 2, you can consider this as by 2. Then volume rate of flow of liquid is A. You can common or 2G H 2G under root. Then by 2 you can write like this. Then this is going to be root H1 plus root, root H2 here. Okay. So you can frame a brackets over here like this. Then after that, V by D can also be written as A. So this is 2G. This goes under root becomes 2 square. That is square root of H1 plus square root of H2. So this 2 gets cancelled. Then V by T can be taken as A. This is going to be G by 2. And this is root of H1 plus root of H2 like this. So you can consider this as equation number 1. And this can be considered as equation number 2. Okay. So what is our aim here? Our aim is to find out what is the time taken by the liquid to decrease from level of H1 to level of H2. So you need to find out the time. How can you get the time here? What you have to do find out the time? You have to just do one thing. You can do 1 by 2 here. So 1, this is 1 and this is 2. So if you do 1 by 2, what are you going to get now? So 1 by 2. So what is this 1? So this is V and this is V by T and this is... Okay, so here area, area of the orifice, you can consider this as small a to avoid the confusion because already capital A we have taken the surface. As this has taken as small a, you can consider here as small a. So these are all getting to be small a here. So these are all getting to be small a. So this is small a here. This is going to be g by 2. Okay, so first of all, you have to consider this one. This is a square root of h1 plus root of h2 into square root of h1 minus square root of h2. So this is 1. Then what is 2 here? 2 is this one. Therefore we can write a. This is g by 2 and square root of h1 square root of h2. So we got the values here and we can cancel out the common things here. So now this v is also getting cancelled. Therefore time the formula is capital A by small a, capital A by small a here. Then after that, this can be taken as root of 2 by g. And what is left? That is root of h1 minus root of h2. Then with this, you will understand one thing that the time is directly proportional to root of h1 minus root of h2. So time taken by the liquid to empty is directly proportional to difference of square root of heights. So once you get understand this concept, you can take a screenshot of this concept because this is the most toughest concept ever the children are asked me. Many children asked what is the formula? How can you get this formula? Because in most of the books, the derivation is not given. If at all it is given, it is given in terms of integration and differentiation which is very difficult for neat students to follow. So it's a very simple derivation I have given you. So uh, we can uh, discuss one problem which is related to this here. Okay, so what is the problem which we can discuss here? Let us see. Now we can frame one problem. Find the ratio of times taken by the liquid to decrease to decrease the height from h to h by 2 okay so first is you have to find out h to h by 2 find the ratios of time so this is the first case here from h to h by 2 and from h by 2 to mt okay so what is the time taken by the liquid to flow from h level h to h by 2 and from h by 2 to totally completing the liquid that is we have to empty the liquid so what are you going to do now here so time you know the formula for this is time is directly proportional to root of h1 minus root of h2 
what is the problem actually here there is a small hole and this tank is kept at certain height and the liquid is coming out from that so he's asking us to find out previously height was h and now the height is h by 2 so this time is taken as t1 here now and the remaining liquid is also coming out and that time is considered to be t2 he is asking us to find out what is the ratios of these times here now it's very simple to find out what are you going to do now so this is t1 by t2 so from h1 h1 is nothing but h here okay so you can write h and h2 in this case the first case h1 is h h2 is h by 2 so we can write this as h by 2 and in the second case h by 2 to 0 we can write because h1 in the second case this h by 2 is going to be h1 in the second case and when the liquid is completely coming out of that tank is empty then height can be considered as 0 therefore in the second case h1 is going to be h by 2 and the final height is going to be 0 because there is no liquid because the tank is completely over no liquid is there in that so therefore t1 by t2 if you common out root h what are you going to get now so this is 1 minus 1 by root 2 and this is root 2 if you do this is 1 by root 2 minus 0 nothing is present here okay so uh, this is root h if you common out root h if you common out this is going to be 1 by root 2 so root h root h gets cancelled here so we can take it as root 2 minus 1 by root 2 divided by 1 by root 2 so 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 gets cancelled the ratio is going to be root 2 minus 1 by 1 so this is the answer for you to get the concept over here if you understand this concept it's very simple and there are sometimes he may be asking uh, questions like what is the time taken for a liquid to complete from when h1 is h and h2 previously h1 is considered as h and h2 that is the next from here to uh, uh, that is 3h by 4 okay 3h by 4 sometimes he will ask like that the first uh, for this you find out time t1 and the next uh, question he is going to ask you that 3h by 4 as h1 in the second case to h2 is equal to h by 4 so what is the time taken for the liquid to decrease from height h2 3 fourth of the height and from 3 fourth of the height to 1 fourth of the height the same concept you are going to apply here so t1 by t2 is first of all you write root h1 as 3h by 4 h2 as h by 4 under root so three under root of 3h by 4 minus under root of h by 4 in the second case you are going to write here this one under root of h by under root of 3h by 4 so like this these are the two pairs of the values and these are the two pairs of the values values here and the time taken here is t1 for this time taken is t2 if this type of question is asked it's very simple you can write like this t1 by t2 is equal to first is root h minus 3h by 4 but the second case is 3h by 4 minus h by 4 so if you simplify this one you are going to get the answer hope you have understood this concept and this was the most uh, I mean popular concept uh, which was most asked by the students especially need students because they didn't understand the derivation and integration okay so thank you very much for listening and I think you understood this concept thank you very much okay today we shall discuss this problem uh, this is a very very tricky problem tricky problems in easiest possible manner we shall discuss here so in this case if you observe there is a tank in this tank water is present let us consider this is a water tank and a vehicle is moving forward with certain acceleration here when the vehicle is moving forward with certain acceleration you know that pseudo force acts on the liquid which is present inside this pseudo force creates a pseudo acceleration Therefore, if an acceleration of the uh, body which is moving forward, that is a vehicle which is moving forward is A, then that acceleration acts in the form of a pseudo acceleration in the backward direction. So, what happened to the shape of the water in this uh, tank here? A shape of the water is going to be a little bit changed. The shape is like this. Previously, the shape was like this. So, this part of the liquid which was on the other side of the 
motion of the vehicle is going to rise to certain level y here previously height was h now as there is a motion in a body the liquid is going to rise to certain height y so this is the height raised by the liquid so uh, as g is acting downwards i have taken this part separately and explain the forces acting on that that is accelerations acting on that so force due to gravity so g is acting downwards so this is pseudo force pseudo acceleration is acting backwards this is going to be angle theta over here this is going to be angle theta so if you take tan theta this is a means this is also going to be a so tan theta is equal to opposite side by adjacent side that is a by g then if you consider this part of the tank here tan theta is going to be opposite side by adjacent side you know that the length of the tank is l here so tan theta is equal to y by l i am writing y by l here so by seeing this you will understand one thing what is that lhs are going to be same lhs are going to be same then you can write y by l is equal to a by g with this you got the value of y y is equal to a l by g so you got the value of y which is taken as a l by g here okay so we got the value of y now this is y here then he is asking us to find out the gas pressure at the four points let us find out the gas pressure at four points this is point a so what is the pressure at point a so pressure at point a as there is no liquid at this point a above that point a you are not going to see any liquid here so pressure at this point is going to be zero that is called as gas pressure at this point is going to be zero and you have to find out the pressure at this point that is b so how much liquid is above this point b it is height h here so what are you going to write now you are going to write h rho g so pressure at point b is taken as h rho g then you would like to find out the pressure at this point d and c how are you going to find out the pressure at d here so pressure at d can be written like this so what is the height here h rho g you know the formula for pressure the general formula for pressure is h rho g here height is y and density is a rho and there is g is there h rho g density of the water is rho here so you know the value of y what is the value of y i have just written the value of y as al by g so pressure at d y can be taken as al by g into rho g so gg gets cancelled so pressure at point d can be taken as al rho this is the pressure at point d now what is the gas pressure at point c this you have to find out now so how are you going to find out the gas pressure at point c here so gas pressure at point c can be considered as total height h rho g is the formula total height is going to be h plus y into rho g so this is going to be the total height here so you all know that this can be written as rho g h plus rho g y so pressure at point c is rho g h plus rho g y so here rho g y the value of rho g y is a l rho we already got this one the value of rho y rho g is a l rho we got already here so we can write a l rho so pressure at this point c is considered to be rho g h plus a l rho it is very simple problem it's a very tricky problem thank you very much okay so let us discuss this problem over here there are two liquids in this vessel each liquid is having a height of 5 meters this is 5 meters this is 5 meters and you are going to observe that the density of the liquid in the upper part is a rho and the density of the liquid at the below part is going to be 2 rho and it is asked that what is the force exerted in the upper part and what is the force exerted by the lower part you have to find out the ratio of that okay so how are you going to find the ratio for that it is very easy to find out the ratio first thing is you have to find out what is the force in the upper part and what is the force in the lower part so you all know pressure is equal to force by area 
and force is equal to pressure into area if you observe the pressure at this place is going to be zero as you are not considering the atmospheric pressure but pressure at this place is uh, the formula is going to be h rho g as the formula is going to be h rho g you will take it as 5 rho g then the pressure at the bottom point is going to be how much so pressure at the upper point is going to be h rho g is 5 rho g whereas the pressure at the bottom point is taken as 5 into rho g h rho g means here the density is double times of the previous density so h rho rho is 2 rho into g so this is p3 here okay so how are you going to find out f1 first see as i said previously that if this is the liquid you have to consider the center of mass of the liquid so you have to take by 2 here okay so you have to consider the average of the pressures here also you have to consider the pressure by 2 here because pressure applied at the exactly the middle point of this point that is because of center of mass you have to consider center of mass of liquid you have to consider then what is pressure what is the force f1 let us find out force f1 here so rho 1 is nothing but 0 and here rho 2 is nothing but 5 rho g by 2 into area okay so let us find out f1 by f2 you will find out now so by f2 is how much here it is going to be p2 p2 is nothing but 5 rho g okay so p3 is how much it is 15 rho g okay 5 to the 10 plus 5 that is going to be 15 rho g by 2 into area 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 gets cancelled 2 2 gets cancelled here so the ratio of the forces is going to be f1 by f2 is equal to 5 rho g by 20 rho g rho g rho g gets cancelled here 5 ones 5 fours therefore f1 by f2 is going to be 1 is to 4 this is going to be the answer for this problem i think you understood